Hey, it's Machine Dana. I hope you're doing really, really well. It is an absolute scorcher in the UK at the moment. We're literally having two of the hottest days on record. If I look a little bit sweaty in this video, I'm really, really sorry, but I wanted to get a new video out because I've not uploaded for quite a few weeks. And that's because my wife recently gave birth on the 1st of July to our little baby, Evie. It's been really nice sharing some of the stories and the journey with you guys. And I hope to share more of the stories about our parenting as we go along. It's our first baby. And I'm very lucky that I've been able to spend a couple of weeks of paid leave from my job and from content to be able to spend that quality time with my wife and my new baby, Evie. With that said, I am now back in action and looking forward to getting some content out there. This video, I'm going to be covering six GoXLR tips specifically for streamers. For some reason, there doesn't seem to be any GoXLR tip videos out there, which is a little bit weird. There are setup videos, and I also have many setup videos, which I will link in the description below. Things about how to set up Discord, how to set up Spotify. This specific video is all about tips that you can use whilst you are streaming, and more than likely, some of these things will be things that you do not know how to do or don't know about yet. With that said, if you do enjoy this video and find it useful, hit the like button, feel free to subscribe to the channel, and let's go. Massive shout out to own.tv who are sponsoring this video and are my partners. I want to mention a couple of cool new releases from own.tv. One of them is the Call of Duty skins specifically to show your support for Call of Duty and it will brand your stream exactly like Call of Duty. These are official Call of Duty designs. The second thing I wanted to mention was the emote maker here. You can literally make your own emote and even make them animated. Here we can change the appearance of the emote, design your own avatar and then animate it and then check out the emotes that you then want to purchase. If you use code machine at checkout, you will also get 50% off the price of your order and you'll also be supporting this channel. GoXLR tip number one is all about how you can save different GoXLR profiles. I've done a detailed video on backing up your profiles, setting up new profiles and all the rest of it. So I'm not going to cover exactly how to do all of those things. The first tip here would be to set up different profiles specifically to your needs as a streamer. You may do some one-to-one -one camera streaming for your basic content, but then you may have some multi-person streaming as well. For example, I myself will stream with my wife and we have a separate GoXLR profile for when we're streaming together and we have like two separate microphones. You can set up as many GoXLR profiles as you want and you can even copy and paste profiles, delete them, rename them, and even have a different microphone sound for every single one of those profiles. That being said, you can also have profiles for specific microphones. So if you use more than one type of microphone, you may want to change the different sounds that come through. The EQ you can amend per the microphone and that just means that you can sort of work to the strengths of the microphone through the same device as i said i'm not going to go into all the detail here but all the profile information is here within the goxlr software you can right click to duplicate rename delete and add new profiles and there's some quick buttons here i would recommend if you're fairly happy with all of your settings for your profile for the microphone that you've got that you simply just right click and duplicate and then make the edits from there if you're only making minor tweaks the next tip i've got is to link your goxlr to your stream deck. This is something that doesn't take much to set up. A lot of people do have both a stream deck and the GoXLR. The two go quite well hand in hand because you're able to do things on the GoXLR at the push of a button on the stream deck. And I'm going to mention two of these now as tip number two and tip number three in relation to the stream deck. I do have a video all about how you can link your stream deck to your GoXLR. So feel free to click on the card here or in the description below, I'll leave a link. But tip number two here will be to have a music toggle on your stream deck for your GoXLR. You're probably wondering what I mean by that, but don't worry, I'll explain all of that now and show you exactly how you can set that up. So once you've linked the GoXLR to your stream deck, you'll have these profile changes and the routing table change. Tip number two requires the second button, the routing table change. So I'm going to drag that button on here and from here, I'm going to say this is a music toggle. Actually, I might just enter to drop that down. Now from here, we can select to toggle the music into or out of 
our headphones. So I'm going to select the input to be the music here. So this will be once it's linked to Spotify. You may want to check out the video here first about how you can set up Spotify on the fader for the Go XLR. But now we've got the input for the music and the output we can now select to the headphones. So this just means we're talking about music and we're talking about the output, whether or not we want it to appear in our headphones. And now we just need to select the action, which you can either say, I want to turn it on. You can have a dedicated button to turn the music on, a dedicated button to turn the music off, or you can just have a toggle switch that when you press the same button, each time it will toggle between those two things. Now, why is this important? If you've got your music coming through to your stream and your viewers are listening to music, you may not always want to listen to your music as well, but you may want your viewers to listen to the music. That just means, for example, if you're playing a first person shooter game and you want to be able to hear the footsteps and perform to the best possible level in that game, you could turn the music off for yourself, but still allow your viewers to be able to listen and chill to the music in your stream. The reverse is true also. You may want to listen to some chill music whilst you're streaming, but you may not want your viewers to listen to the same music. For example, it might be copyrighted music that you want to listen to whilst you're streaming, but you obviously don't want to get a copyright strike. This is probably the most used function that I have the integration between GoXLR and the Stream Deck for. And tip number three would be for microphone monitoring. So this is me being able to hear my microphone within my own headset, but then also being able to toggle that on and off. So maybe I just want to know momentarily what my voice sounds like and to be able to hear my voice to monitor it, but then I don't want it to disturb me throughout the stream. So this uses the exact same function. And this time I'm going to go for the GoXLR routing table change. We're going to call this mic monitor. And the input this time needs to be for the microphone because we're talking about what we're doing with the microphone. And the output will be whether I want to hear that or not on the headphones. And once again, the action is a toggle. And when I press this on, it will mean that the microphone will output to my headphones. When I turn it off, it'll mean that the microphone does not output to my headphones. But all of the other settings that you've got on your OBS Studio or your Streamlabs OBS will still apply as normal. This does not affect your stream output. And just to explain how those two tips work, you've got the inputs here and the outputs. Now, most of you will be outputting to a broadcast stream mix, which has every single output from the GoXLR. What I've just described here is having the music play through the headphones, but I can also choose to toggle that off with that button that I showed for tip number two, which means the music will not show to the headphones. But as you can see here, the music is still showing the broadcast stream mix, which means the viewers can still hear that. And the moment I press that toggle on again, it means that I will hear the music as well. The same applies to the microphone, but this time to the headphones. So the broadcast stream mix, all of my viewers are still hearing my microphone, but when that is pressed, I will be able to hear my microphone. And when I turn it off, that means I cannot hear my microphone through my headset. Go XLR tip number four is all about how you can set up different lighting profiles to different Go XLR profiles. Now I've already talked earlier on in the video tip number one about setting up different profiles in general. Now I'm going to talk about how you can set up different lighting profiles specifically for your branding for different Go XLR profiles. So let's say I want to set up a completely different lighting profile using the exact same microphone and audio settings. I'm just going to right click my profile here and click duplicate. We now have a copy of this and I'm going to rename this lighting profile two. We can have a completely different set of branding on lighting profile two, which will appear on the Go XLR, but all of the audio settings are exactly the same on that lighting profile. So I'm just going to click on this to amend the settings on this profile. Now it's loaded that profile and there'll be no changes to the audio whatsoever. As we can see here on the mixer, all of the mixers here in the EQ is exactly the same on lighting profile two. So if I double click that, there are no changes. However, when I go to the lighting profile here, I now get the option to change all of these settings here. For example, for channel one, I might want to have a red toggle here. Then I might want to have a green. And then for channel three, let's say we want to go back to red again. And channel four, back to green again. You get the idea. You can customize the lighting to the specific profiles. And I can now flick between those depending on what mood I'm in. And you can literally set as many of these up as you want. All this means is that you can play around with the lighting profiles without affecting your original profile. It's just a very quick and easy tip. And one great use case of this is tip number five here, which is setting up a sleep profile for your Go XLR. Now, if you've got a Go XLR, if you're anything like me, you may have noticed that it sort of just doesn't, by default, turn itself off at nighttime. And that's because it's still powered from your PC, even when you turn off your PC. However, if you set up a sleep 
profile, then you can enable your GoXLR to have the lights completely turned off. I'll show you very quickly how you can set this up. So first, we're going to go back into the default profile that I have. This is my normal GoXLR profile. I'm going to once again right click and duplicate that profile. I'm going to rename this Sleep. We now have this sleep profile here and it's got all of the same audio settings. So I'm going to click into it. When I see this tick appear here, it means that I'm editing the sleep profile. Now, one very quick word of warning here. If you make changes in this app and you don't click save this save button here, it will not save those changes. If you exit the software here and go back into it, all the changes that you make will not be saved. So we now have this, but how do we get rid of this lighting? Well, quickest way to do this is go on to the global settings here and we go on global in the area section. We click on global and we simply click on this color wheel. We click on the hexes here, these little squares. It'll take it from a gradient view to a kind of like predefined colors view. And all we want to do on the global settings on global here is click this button. So from here, we can actually do loads of different things. But let's say it was blue. We can make the sleep profile fully blind like that. And that will apply that color to all of your GoX light, including the accent colors here. Now, all I have to do is click save on that, click OK. And I can flick between my normal profile, which has light, we double click on that. We've got all the settings again and we can click back to sleep and we've got no lights at all, meaning you can sleep in peace without having all of your branding blaring out whilst you're trying to sleep. What I will say here is if you've got a Stream Deck as well and you have linked your Stream Deck to your GoXLR, you can use this first button here, the GoXLR profile change, and you can simply drag it on. And from here, we can select the sleep profile and we can name that sleep here. We can then drag on another profile change button. And this time I'm gonna select the Vaporwave, which is my default profile, and we'll call it default. Now, when I press Press those two buttons, it will change the profile within the GoXLR, but only using the Stream Deck. So it's just a nice quality of life GoXLR tip. Now, the final tip here, tip number six for the GoXLR, is simply to talk about some of the different lighting settings that are available to you. I'm mainly going to run through the apply to all setting, the coughing and bleeping options that you've got available. And then I'm just going to suggest a profile setup that you may want to consider, which is a red slash green profile that shows when buttons are turned on and off. You don't have to apply this, but I've found this to be really useful as a nice visual indicator whilst I'm streaming. So first of all, just to cover the apply to all setting, just to make sure that you're applying the same setting across all of your buttons. If you're anything like me, you're quite OCD about these things. So if you want to make a change to all of your faders, you can simply click apply to all here and then make those changes. For example, if I want to make everything green, I can do that and it will apply it to everything. This not only works on the faders as we've got here, but also on the mute buttons too. So now if I want to apply a different color to all of these buttons at the same time. I simply click on the apply to all button, make sure I'm happy with the inactive options, which we'll cover in just a second. And then we simply want to change the color. For example, dim active color. We do that and we want to make them all blue. We can do that. It applies to them all. Just briefly to cover what these mute options are, you've got the dim active color. If we just hover above this and let it show us the tooltip, it uses a dim version of the active color when the mute is inactive. All that means is it will dim the active color when you you've pressed it, whether it's active or inactive. So really you're selecting the button to be one color and it's just having an active and an inactive version. And it's the brightness of that color that basically determines whether it's turned on or off on your GoXLR. Next up, we've got an inactive color. And this just means you can determine a separate color for when the button is inactive. For example, I may want a green active button and a blue inactive button. We'll just look at the chat here. When I press that button there, it will go green. And when I press it again, it will go blue, two separate colors. I find this to be particularly useful for the cough and beeps because it just means you've got a little bit more dynamicness about it. You know when the buttons are pressed at the press of a button. One very quick cool thing here is that there is an accent area as well. And this accent is literally just the color of that X on the GoXLR. We can choose to make that a completely different color. For example, we want to make it red there. It's just a cool, nice little feature, but many people probably won't know that you can just change that little bit there. I said I would run through a profile that I've found to be particularly useful, which visually tells me when something is turned on or off and it just uses green and red to indicate that. Now the way that I've set this up is actually on the mixer section here and I'm using the buttons. So this is the mute buttons that control all of these and I'm using the inactive color section. So this just switches between a green and the red depending on whether it's active or inactive. So I've actually got the active color as red, inactive color as green and you can choose the shade that you want. Now the reason why I have this is it means when I've muted, for example, my mic, it means that the mute is active, but it goes red. So red indicates that my microphone is not on. So let me just press that to show you what that looks like. 
When that's on, my microphone will not work and I can see visually that there is a red core there. My microphone is not on and it saves those embarrassing moments on stream when you think that you're talking to your audience and actually your microphone's muted. Having it green just shows basically all of the channels on your Go XLR mixer are all active at the moment. And I've then used the cough and bleep settings exactly the same. So active is red and inactive is green. So that was six Go XLR tips for you streamers. Hopefully you found it useful. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button. Feel free to subscribe if you want to. Check out the other GoXLR videos in the description below and have a wonderful day. Take care.